Hi everybody, we're gonna go over the case of Sophia Juarez and the new information that's come out and that TikTok video you probably have heard about. I'm gonna show that to you too. All right, see you in a sec. So get, let me give you a little bit of background. Sophia Juarez, she was four years old, almost five, when she went missing back in Kennewick, Washington on February 4th, 4th 2003. She went out of the house. She was, was supposed to be following her father and they don't know exactly what happened, how she ended up where she was and she just went missing. and. She has never been found since. And things have pretty much been quiet for a while. And then a TikTok video popped up. Now, if you remember back uh, about back in March, there was a woman that was found in Mexico who was homeless and they thought that she was a missing person. Well, this is the same thing we got going here, except this is a TikTok video of a guy doing a interview with this young woman. And this is when this information came out that she said she had been held captive and now she was looking for her family. So the man is from Sonolia, Mexico, or he was in Sonolia, Mexico. And he has a TikTok account that, uh, let me see if I get this right, uh, Gia Yaya is a TikTok account. And he did the interview and uh, he talked to the woman and she spoke in Spanish. And so I had to go through a lot of different um, media resources and things like that in order to find out exactly what she said so I could get the translation correct. And one of the, so she says, the truth is, or you know what? Let me show you the video. Let me show you the video, then I'll go back and tell you uh, for those that don't speak Spanish, I'll, I'll let you, I'll give you what I learned what was in that video. So you watch it next. A mi tata y a mi nana. <risa> si también de este programa quiero decirle que vengan por mí porque aquí estoy secuestrada. No, yo no te voy a secuestrar. <risa> pues dicen que estoy secuestrada, otros dicen que ando en Italia, otros en Japón. O porque vengan por mí, porque la verdad no sé de dónde soy, si soy de aquí o soy de allá. Estás en Culiacán, Sinaloa. Estoy en Culiacán, Sinaloa. So, one of the things I've picked up is, she says, the truth is, I don't know where I'm from. And she said she was addicted to drugs and also that she was, said hello to her grandparents and she was asking her grandparents to come pick her up. Now, she said she was 22 years old, but that she wasn't sure she had stopped uh, celebrating birthdays and she lost track. Now, we know that Sophia would be 23 years old now, 22, 23, that's very, very close. Now, that was it on that video. But through the process, and you know social media, they latched on to this and they started thinking, okay, is she a missing woman from the United States? And they did some comparison and they came up with uh, Sophia Juarez when she went missing back in 2003 and they did the computation said, you know, the, the dates are right. They would match this young woman and it could possibly be her. Now the police do know about this one. You know, the other one with uh, Jane McDonald Crone, we never were clear if the U S authorities were brought into that case or not. But this one, we know that the police chief said, Yes, he's aware of the TikTok video and they were going to pursue it. And what they needed was DNA. Let me put the dog down for a second to say hello. And with uh, that DNA, they would be able to rule her out or confirm that it's Sophia. 
Now, the problem is they don't know where she's at. They've lost track of her. And this is pretty typical. I've got a lot of stories on missing homeless people in Mexico. And when they see the picture and they think, oh, that might be my missing family member. They try to find out where this person is. They can't locate them. They try calling the embassy and it's very limited because of the trying to uh, get what you're trying to do across with when you don't have any knowledge or any Spanish behind you. It's really it makes it difficult. Now they, the media has got a hold of Sophia's family. Now her mother died back in, I believe it was 2000. 2007, Sophia's mother died in 2007, but the rest of her family are still searching for her. And they said when they saw the TikTok video that no, it wasn't her. Uh, and then the sister came forward when she was doing a media interview. And let me get what she said here. Victoria Juarez, she came out and she said that she saw some similarities between this woman and Sophia. Now, I she didn't specify what those similarities were, so we don't know at this point in time. Now, the Kennewith Police Lieutenant Aaron Klim, he said he's going to follow up on every tip that comes through. And they're doing their due diligence. In the meantime, they've also come up with other new information. I'm not sure if it's because of the TikTok video that's been brought to everybody's attention so other people decided to come forward or if it is just the timing uh, has come up and then the TikTok video has nothing to do with it. I couldn't find anything exact on that. But they're saying that the new leads are, they're looking for information. They're actually looking for the vehicle but it's been a few years, but they are, someone has information on a light blue, silver, or gray van that was parked near where Sophia was last seen on South Washington and East 15th Street. I have a map. You can take a look there and see where that's at. They say it's a 1970 to 1980s full-size panel van that looked like a work van, but it was not a work van. So if you can figure out what that is, I guess they're talking about because there's no windows on the sides. And then they have another witness. They feel it's pretty viable where they said that they saw someone approach Sophia on Washington Street and lead her away and she was crying. So that has come out. So on a lot of cases like this, years will go by, like 10 years will go by, 15, 20 years go by. And people that didn't come out before, will now come out and that has to do with their probably at this point they feel figure they don't have anything to worry about about saying anything although i don't really know what they'd be worried about but you know people do do get nervous about coming forward now you're going to see a photo of what the rendering of what they believe sophia looks like now an age progressed photo and that was put out by missing and exploited children and you could see that the nose is different, much different than the woman on TikTok. Now, you know, they have to kind of estimate what these features will look like as somebody grows and whether that nose is accurate or not, we don't really, really know. Now, on my Missing Persons of America website, you can go and see the story, and you also can take a look at the links that I have placed in there for the J. McDonald Crone story that I spoke about that came out in March when they thought that they had found her. And you can also look at the other story where I have a missing homeless Americans in Mexico, and that's a really long story and it has lots of photos of people that have been seen in Mexico and the photographs were taken and sent over to me and then I have listed them there and you can take a look and see if there's anybody there that you think you recognize if you're looking for your family member and you also see some details on other people that you can contact in order to help you if you do think you recognize somebody there. Now Sophia, there's some things that were particular about Sophia's description. She had a birthmark on her lower back. 
She had a mole under her right eye, although when you look at those pictures, you really don't see a mole. So it must have been really, really tiny, but I do think they they appear more as you get older. And let's see what else. Uh, pierced earrings, and she was wearing gold earrings at that time. I don't know if that would help any, but we let's make sure we got that out there. And, and she was missing her front teeth when she went missing. And then, you know, she was three feet tall, 30 pounds with black hair and brown eyes. And we know that she no longer will be three feet tall or 30 pounds. So everybody, what do you think? Do you think it's possibly Sophia? Or do you think maybe it might be some other person that went missing? Let me know in the comments below. So I think I pretty much have covered it. I want to get this out to you because I knew that you probably would have a lot of questions and I wanted to do the background research for you so you've got the straight information on what's going on with that case. If I hear anything about it, I will certainly let you know if there is, uh, if they do find her, they still have to get her DNA. Just because they find her doesn't mean it's actually her, but they're going to have to get her DNA. That's the only way you're going to find out 100% if this is her or not. And then she has to be found, and then we have to have cooperation with Mexico, I'm sure, in order to get all these loose ends tied up and to confirm that it actually is Sophia. So this is not something that's going to take a day or two. It may be weeks before we get to the bottom of what's going on with this case, if she is located. All right. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Bye-bye.